I think one of the uh, current challenges or conundrums we have um, in renal cancer, in advanced renal cancer, is that we have a uh, we have a plethora of choices for first line therapy now, and of course uh, that includes combinations of immune checkpoint inhibitors and TKIs given simultaneously. Um, uh, and we had uh, we we we, have, we we already have. Um, positive phase three data for the combination of avalimab and axitinib, pembrolizumab and axitinib, nivolumab and cabozantinib. And in this meeting, we saw the results of the CLEAR trial. So this was actually a three-arm phase three trial comparing, again, sunitinib, the standard of care. That's been the comparator in all of those trials. But in the, the patients were randomized to receive either sunitinib or pembrolizumab plus lenvatinib. But there was also a third arm, which was first-line lenvatinib plus everolimus. Um, now, let's deal with the immune combination, the pembro-lenva combination here. So this showed very similar results to the other studies. So again, it's another IOTKI option for patients. Um, difficult. These are non-comparative studies, so very difficult to know how that how that helps us choose um, between that and the other IOTKI combinations. But it's yet another pos strongly positive study for that. The the Lenva um, Everolimus combination, of course, is interesting because we already used that drug that combination as a post TKI option. Remember that was based on a relatively small randomised phase two study. So this is actually the first time we've seen uh, randomised phase three type data for this combination, albeit in this instance in the first line setting. Interestingly, it was a positive trial. That is, it showed a superior progression free survival compared with sunitinib but it did not show an overall survival advantage. So um, I guess it's difficult to know where that now places that combination of therapy, at least in the frontline setting. But I guess it is also helpful to have some phase positive phase three data, albeit not in that second line setting where the drug is currently used. In terms of the... Um, IOTKI combinations. Um, we also had the quality of life data from the Checkmate 9 ER study. So that was the study of nivolumab plus cabozantinib compared with sunitinib in the frontline setting. We had those results previously, again, strongly positive for overall survival as well as progression free survival. Um, and um, actually, the quality of life data were really quite, quite compelling because they did show that in all analyses um, that it looked like quality of, quality of life was better in the combination setting than for the monoagent sunitinib. Um, and particularly, uh, they did the quality of life assessment on day one of a six-week cycle. So actually, if anything, it may have underplayed the toxicities of sunitinib in, that, in the contribution to quality of life. So I thought this was quite compelling data. And, it, and, and I think we, we, we may now need to go away and look in more detail at the quality of life data from those other IOTKI trials. Non-clear cell kidney cancer remains an area of uncertainty. All of the phase three trials, all these big recent practice changing phase three trials have excluded patients with non-clear cell pathology. And although they're relatively rare, it's still we see lots of these patients. Um, in my practice, about a quarter of our patients we treat have non-clear cell kidney cancer. Um, uh, I guess the standard of care has been to treat it much the same as we treat clear cells. So until recently, that would be sunitinib. And of course, there were some randomized phase two trials, um, uh, which did, did demonstrate that sunitinib was um, pro probably the, mo the, more active, the most active treatment in that context. Um, but this was a trial, uh, it was actually a four-way randomization between uh, sunitinib, cabozantinib, Crizotinib and savalitinib. So those latter two drugs, well, actually all three of those, those, those drugs, of course, have some MET activity, which we know is important in papillary renal cancer. Um, in fact, the savalitinib and crizotinib um, uh, arms were stopped early due to futility. So it essentially became a randomized phase two of sunitinib versus cabozantinib. Um, uh, and it did show that uh, cabozantinib has uh, 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 certainly a better response rate and a, and a more encouraging looking progression free survival compared with sunitinib. Phase two data, but I think at the moment it's probably the best we've got in terms of randomized data in non clear cell kidney cancer. And of course, cabozantinib is already licensed in that first line setting. So I think this potentially is a really 
uh, practice informing study uh, and, 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 and where we're able to, it may be that cabozantinib would be a good first line choice of TKI for patients with non-clear cell kidney cancer. 